We're going to start talking about gases now, and the first thing we want to introduce is this uh, an idea called the universal gas constant. So the way this is developed is if you think about a gas, it could be any gas, uh, in a piston cylinder sort of setup, right? So it's free to move and whatnot, okay? And we keep that at a constant temperature, okay? And what we do is uh, we reduce the pressure, yet keeping it keeping the temperature constant, okay? So all of these, and we plot basically PV over T as a function of um, that pressure as it's decreasing, okay? And you can see that for these constant temperature lines, they all converge back to a single PV over T. That's pressure volume divided by temperature. They all converge back to that. And that converging point is what we call the universal gas constant. Now, this is done in molar form, which we hate here uh, as engineers. Uh, but, you know, that's where the constant comes from. The constant actually is universally constant in molar form. So we have all these different... Uh, units that we can use either in uh, and just depending on you know what we're trying to find and things you know use the the appropriate amount of units now in engineering again we hate the molar form so more often we immediately take that r bar and we divide it by the molecular weight of whatever substance we have whether it's air or carbon dioxide or oxygen or, or you know whatever it is okay and then the units become in mass terms as opposed to molar terms and we like mass because that's how we measure things in engineering so um just keep in mind that nine times out of ten that R bar value, that universal gas constant is going to immediately be divided by that molecular weight because, again, we don't like bars above our variables. We like to get things in terms of mass. Okay, So that's the universal gas constant. Now, we're going to use that quite often as we move forward. The first thing that we're going to talk about is this idea of a generalized compressibility chart. Okay, And we're going to quickly take this and move into what we call the ideal gas model. But for now, we're, we're going to start with this compressibility chart. And what this does is it relates pressure, volume, and temperature for gases. And the, the, the picture you see here is a, is a more simplified version of the chart that I'll show you in the example that I'm going to do, which is uh, figure 1A in the back of the book, part of those appendices that we've been using. And the idea here is if you know any two of these properties, you can find the other. So if you know pressure and volume, you can find temperature. Or volume and temperature, you can find pressure. And again, this is specific to gases as opposed to the vapor, uh, the liquid vapor tables that we've been dealing with previously. This is, you know, strictly what we use for gases, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about what we see on the chart. The first thing you'll notice is the vertical axis is Z, which is what we call the compressibility factor, which is essentially PV over RT. And again, this derives from our idea of... Um, the universal gas constant we talked about previously. Okay, now as P approaches zero, okay, based on what we just talked about previously, uh, if, you, if you take that equation we had over there, PV over T, they all converge back to the universal gas constant. This compressibility factor Z actually equals zero. And you can see that in the chart here. Basically, as I move to the left, which is effectively pressure, we'll talk more about exactly what that is, you can see this approaches one as I drop my, my pressure further and further down. Now, what I actually have on the horizontal is what we call the reduced temperature and pressure. And what the reduced temperature pressure is by the pressure that I'm located divided by the critical pressure temperature of whatever substance I have. Okay. Now, what is that? Okay. You remember we talked about the critical point uh, on the vapor dome. Okay. This is the pressure and temperature at that critical point. And these are actually shown in table A1. Okay. So it's kind of like a relative, uh, you know, relative to that vapor dome where our pressure lies. Okay. So that's what's actually. Um, plotted here is a reduced pressure and what we have is our reduced temperature as a function of that reduced pressure and from that we can back out our z value so it, you know again this way we can use one chart for any any gas that i have 
Okay, as long as I know the critical pressure and critical temperature of, of that substance, I can use one single chart, which is why we do that. Okay, now on the chart that is not here, but the chart that we have in the back of the book, there's also what we call a pseudo specific, uh, uh, pseudo reduced specific volume, which you can actually calculate this way. Uh, and this is just a better approximation of what's actually going on than the volume divided by the critical volume. Okay, so we use the pseudo specific volume um, in, in the back of the book. And again, I encourage you to go to the example problem now to see exactly the, the chart we're using and how we, we use it. But again, this is a way that we can relate pressure, volume, and temperature for gases.